Rigor Arturo here. Um, it's been a while since we last talked. Or I just talked to the camera and said what we got. Andrew in the background. Peace. <laughs> and uh, I'm, in, I'm in Ashland, Oregon right now. Uh, last time I talked, it's a serendipity to the hammock hippie. Being yeah, like a hippie at that moment on uh, Maui, right before I went to go see Nassim in uh, Kauai, which was wonderful. It was absolutely great. Uh, it was a powerful experience. Quiet itself is a powerful experience. I also have Nassim, um, and Nassim as well. <laughs> and uh, uh, then went to, back to Maui for Mystic Island Festival and taught that workshop there, which is now on YouTube. That was wonderful. That was really great. Um, felt beautiful to be able to offer that download to everyone. And I uh, met some wonderful souls there, and then flew into San Fran, went to Harbin Hot Springs. That was nice, and in one ride got hitched from Williams, California up to Ashland, four hour ride. That was really nice, actually. And uh, from there we, um, uh, well, from there I'm here, I'm here in Ashland. It's pretty wonderful. Um, and so I was gonna share some of the things uh, that's been going through my mind lately. Uh, oh, thank you to everyone who like made this all happen. It's uh, been connecting with the right people, the right, the right team, and dynamic things are happening. So, so uh, I'm just gonna share this. This is one thing we were working on. Um, we're trying to figure out a, a, a manual way to make the coils. We have a, a bomb jig here. That three tubes can go into a top jig, um, which is this pipe over here, and you can slide bars onto it. Um, the layering geometry, so we use this to twist the layering geometry to this guy right here. And we put the masculine intent into it, the linear geometry masculine intent. And we bend it around a bar the right diameter. Um, we put this feminine geometry, so if it feels creation, and then oneness. Um, as you go through creation and the return to oneness in this process, we have it with the triple helix and the double helix. So, I doing that, um, but I really want to share what I'm doing with these numbers. And so we have the Star of David 6x6 hexagram matrices I work with. So we have a, a, a doubling sequence, trendy sequence, a having sequence, doubling sequence, trendy sequence, having sequence. Two sets of three. And uh, the... Um, there's the pattern I'm most interested in, usually, is the interlaced linear sequences. So we have one, two, three, and we skip to the next one. Four, five, six, skip to the next one. Seven, eight, nine, skips the next one. One, but it also goes the other way. Two, three, um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, so there's 36 numbers. And so in those 36 numbers, um, are two circuits, one skipping every other one. And there's those two circuits may have 18 numbers. And there's two linear sequences that make up those 18 number sequence, one through nine, one win, one through nine the other way. And so when I talked about that you have a number circle and you put your intent into one, you put your intent into one thing, uh, well, to experience reality, you have to uh, slow down from an infinite torque, an infinite twist, an infinite knowing of all, and slow down. And so you put your focus of intention onto one thing, the number circle, um, one item of the number circle, and say the number one. So you're having to take your knowing of all and put your compression into your per compression of perspective into one thing, the number one. And ignore the other eight numbers. But then because you're counting in a linear sequence, you move on to the next number, two. Counting by two. Uh, or you go count, you put your focus of attention on one, and your focus of attention on two, and then your focus of attention on three, while always um, ignoring or forgetting the other eight. For the process of forgetting is forgetting something out of focusing on one thing. And so the focus um, is the wave. Your, your compression 
of perspective causes a compression of energy in that in that density. And so this is this is a metaphysical explanation of a longitudinal wave. And so a longitudinal wave is that right there. So um, you're getting compression. So imagine that you divide these each little section, okay, right there, each little section up to nine parts. The, that line is like where you're counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And um, that compression is, is the number counting at that moment, the focus of your perspective. And so things are vibrating into each other. But what happens when you have those two vibrations, those longitudinal waves, vibrating into each other at the same time? You have a longitudinal standing wave. All right? Now what I'm saying, these 18 number sequences, like this one, we're winding one, two, three, and the second one, one, two, three. So you have three circuits. This makes your infamous Star of David, the hexagram winding. We were trying to wind with that double helix. Um, that uh, the uh, the outer points. Um, I don't have it with me. The outer points of the uh, of the torus. The, the parts that touch the boundary layer of the information, because this is the boundary layer of the donut itself. And where is the super donut? Super donut around here? Oh, oh there it is. So, boundary layers, um, this is an 8 by 9 matrix for the octagram, are along the outside of this torus. So this is the internal geometry. Um, but the outside points is where the longitudinal standing wave traverses. And so this information goes around the sides of the geometry, not for this guy, for the Star of David. And so the longitudinal wave, as it compresses into each other, um, it radiates out 90 degrees from that compression, transverse waves. Okay, so a transverse wave. And so, in a longitudinal wave, the energy um, is traveling along, or the vibration is along the rate of movement. And a transverse wave is the oscillation is per perpendicular to the rate of movement. What's also interesting is water waves move both with longitudinal and transverse information. So, it's the doubling sequences Okay, that are the um, transverse waves radiating out from the longitudinal standing wave. Um, but then there's also uh, longitudinal waves going in other directions. So we have counting by two, one, three, five, seven, nine, and then three, five, seven, nine, two, four, six, eight. And so you have two different, um, they're alternating directions uh, of uh, longitudinal waves. And so I was just at, at the, the hot springs. The one thing we were doing in the hot springs was showing the simplest way to create vortices. And if you have one hand coming toward you and one going away from you, you have the shearing effect. You create these two vortices that ripple out and you do this shearing effect. So longitudinal wave is a pressure wave. That's all I do with my hand, it's just creating a longitudinal wave. And when you do that, you have the shearing effect of information going three, four, five, six, seven, and uh, uh, nine, eight, seven, six, uh, six, seven, eight, nine. And so there's opposing directions in these diagonals. And so you have uh, this way and this way, and then this way and this way. And so you have a cross hatching of longitudinal waves in the diagonals, um, technically four different vectors. And then there's a transverse wave oscillating in between the longitudinal standing wave. And so um, we have two linear forms slamming into each other. If you look at my favorites, the two donuts slamming into each other. Um, they ra it's like vortex colored rings, um, collision, something like that. They radiate out perpendicular in two linear forms of energy clad. It creates a circular plane and then it collapses back in. So you can almost imagine that that oscillation is two longitudinal waves and a standing wave bouncing back and forth. When they collide, they create the transverse wave out. 
and the transverse wave feeds off the longitudinal waves back and forth, back and forth. And so that's how you interpret this piece of information. The actogram, I'm still fully trying to interpret because it's understanding the Fibonacci sequence, the 24 step sequence, and what it represents as a standing wave. And it's a different form of standing wave than the longitudinal standing wave in the hexagram. The hexagram, as I was saying, is the ratio, the inner diameter to the outer diameter, which again, is, these are all understanding relationships of scale. And so Nassim talks about the scale of the universe. Um, and there's a specific stepping pattern. And so what the toruses do with the inner circles, the outer circles, um, as they increase in, um, it's, a, it's a scaling factor to scale things up and down the fractal structure. And so the octogram is based on the square of the golden ratio. And the hexagram is based on two to one doubling sequence. And so um, one's linear and one is, uh, is exponential. And so um, that's, that's what I was thinking about this whole time. Uh, I also want to show um, so people know this also is that was your longitudinal standing wave. There's also the um, transverse standing wave. Zoom. But the thing about light is um, the magnetic and electric are supposedly moving in the same direction, perpendicular to each other. And so it's interesting to think about that there's a central axis that we, like in VBM, call the God axis. Um, and there's two transverse oscillations radiating from the God axis, the electric and the magnetic. Interesting indeed. Well, everyone, it's been lovely. I've thoroughly enjoyed talking into a camera yet again. So I'm going to run, and uh, I hope you all learned something about waves, how waves move. And oh yeah, longitudinal waves, sound moves that way. Ooh, makes me wonder if you can just ring these. Um, but, uh, oh, one other little thing to show you. I made this, so you're going to test it. Ooh, autogram Starship. Well, no, we did test it. We're, uh, we're building a Faraday cage right now. Being, um, there's way too much Ian back radiation to stuff with scalar. Um, and so, but we're definitely creating some scalar energy, we're trying to overlap scalar fields to uh, convert back to electromagnetic radiation. Whole another story, but. Adios, everyone. Enjoy your day. Namaste.